Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with the Dicey Review. And tonight we're going to be learning how to play the two four player game Forum Trejanum, released by Stronghold Games in the US. Forum Trejanum comes with all of the components that you see here, including four player boards, player aids, five mosaic boards, four slide bars, a first player marker, multiplication markers, three column fragments, and a game board. The game also comes with 24 street cards, 12 Trajan cards, 56 single building tiles, 48 double building tiles, 10 builders, 12 tribunes, 10 assistants, 40 total workers in four different colors, 20 gold coins, and player components in four different player colors. To begin setup, place the game board in the middle of the table. Next, shuffle all the street cards and form three face-down draw piles of eight cards each. You can then place these cards on the designated spaces shown on the game board. Next, you'll lay out a number of mosaic boards depending on the player count. In a two-player game, you'll use three mosaic boards like we've shown here, and you can lay them out in any arrangement. Our setup here is one of the provided examples from the rulebook. Next, you'll sort the double building tiles by color. Then, for each color, take about one half of the tiles and turn them to their other side showing one gray space and one space with the building's color. Make four piles each with the different building tiles and place them on the designated spaces of the game board. When you're done, it should look like this. Next, each player will take one of their forum markers in their player color and place them in the first space of each of the benefit tracks. Then, each player takes the victory point marker in their color and places it in the zero space of the victory point track. Then, separate each color of the single building tiles, just like you did with the double building tiles. Divide each color stack in half, and then place a stack on each of the four spaces of the game board. When you're done, it should look like this. Then, make a general supply next to the board with all of the multiplication markers, coins, assistants, tribunes, builders, and workers. Then, shuffle the Trajan cards for each of the cycles, 1, 2, and 3 and draw one card for each cycle, and then place these cards face up next to the corresponding piles of street cards on the game board. After you've done this, any remaining Trajan cards can be placed back in the box. They won't be used for this game. It's also mentioned in the rulebook that if you want to play with an easier game, you can use only one Trajan card for an introductory game. If you choose to do this, just pick a card from the pile showing three, and then place that on the third position. Since we're showing an introductory game, we'll remove the cards for phase 1 and 2 and just leave the third Trajan card, as suggested in the rulebook. Then, place the column fragment showing three victory points on the place for Trajan's column on the board. Place the two victory point pillar on the second draw pile, and then the final fragment showing one victory point on the third draw pile. And if any players need player aids, keep them next to the game board accessible to all players. Next, each player will receive a Colonia board. It's important to use the A side for your first game. Next, position the slide bar at the top left of the prestige track. Each player will then receive one construction crane of each color. Place these four different colored cranes in the four corners of the Colonia board. The player can choose which corner to place each crane in. Then, each player takes the 34 Colonia tiles of their color and then finds the three tiles with the female envoys printed on the back. After mixing these three tiles, randomly draw one and see which symbol from the three different social classes is displayed. In our example, we revealed the merchant. The player will then place the tile in the farthest left space of one of the two applicable rows. The symbol on the back of the tile will match the symbol on the row. This will give the player a special ability during the game, which we'll cover in more detail later. The two remaining female envoy tiles will be placed face up in any two diagonally opposite corners of the Colonia board. Make sure to place them on top of two construction cranes. Then mix the remaining Colonia tiles face down and place one tile each with the back side facing up on each of the Colonia spaces. Make sure not to cover the four temple spaces and the two Colonia tiles that you place on the remaining unoccupied construction cranes are turned face up to their front side. There will be one Colonia tile left over. You can place it face down in this corner of the board. Then each player will receive these starting resources. One Tribune, one Builder, one Assistant, and one Coin. Then take one worker of each color 
and randomly assign one to the player. The remaining workers can go back to the supply. Finally, the last player to be in a city becomes the starting player and gets the starting player figure. Each space of a player's colonia is covered with tiles that will slowly be removed as the game progresses. Each round, two street cards are revealed that determine which two tiles players can remove from their board. From the two tiles that are removed, one will be kept and one has to be passed to your neighbor to the right. In this way, each player will receive a tile from their neighbor. A player then must select one tile from these remaining two to use and perform an action with. Through their building actions and fulfilling tasks, players can earn victory points. The game is played over three cycles, consisting of four rounds in each cycle. After the final round, the player with the most points is the winner. As mentioned in the overview, the game consists of three cycles, and in each cycle, there are four rounds where players will take turns. At the start of a cycle, players will place a column fragment showing what cycle is currently being played. So when the game is finished, it will look like this. At the beginning of each round, two street cards will be revealed. Each street card shows a symbol that matches a column or row on the player's colonia boards. When these street cards are revealed, all players will simultaneously select one tile that matches a column or row on the player's colonia boards. So for instance, with the current street cards that are revealed, the player could select one tile from this column and one tile from this column. After selecting the two tiles from the board, they will pick one of the tiles to send to their neighbor, and they'll receive another tile from their neighbor as well. It's important to note that each player will select one of these two tiles and pass them face down to the player on their right. Once all the tiles have been passed, each player can look at both of their tiles. Then in turn order, each player will complete a turn. Beginning with the start player and then in turn order, each player will complete a full turn. A player's turn consists of first using a colonia tile and then carrying out a building action. When using colonia tiles, a player will place their tiles face up on the indicated spaces of their player board and choose one to use. The other players will only place these tiles face up in these spaces on their turn. Each tile when used by a player will provide some type of resource, benefit, or helper that players can gain. Let's look at what each tile does for a player. Any tile showing coins, builders, workers, or tribunes allow players to simply take them from the supply. So for instance, the tile on the left would allow a player to take a builder and a tribune. The tile in the middle would allow the player to take a red worker and a tribune. And the tile on the right would allow a player to take one worker of any color and one coin. Some tiles will also allow you to take assistance. Builders and workers allow you to construct building tiles on the second half of your turn. Assistance will change the color of worker tiles to allow for more flexibility when building. Coins are used to pay citizens, which we'll look at in a moment. And the last helper to look at is the Tribune. The Tribune allows you to potentially do two very useful things. The first thing a Tribune can be used for is to ignore a street card's symbol. So for instance, a player could discard one Tribune from their supply to pick a tile from anywhere on the board, regardless of what the street card symbols are. And if a player discards two Tribunes at the start of their turn, they're able to use both of their Colonia tiles, the one that they kept and the one that they received from their neighbor, instead of only being able to use one. An upgrade symbol on a Colonia tile allows a player to move the slide bar on their player board one space to the right. We'll look at what this does for you in later scoring discussions. There are also citizen tiles in each player color. There are six total tiles showing a citizen symbol for each player. When a player uses a citizen tile, they will take the tile and place it in the first space in one of the two matching symbol rows on the left side of the player board. If citizens are placed in this way, they're known as active. Active citizens provide a number of benefits for a player. They allow more powerful scoring opportunities during the round. They multiply points scored during Colonia scoring at the end of each cycle. And depending on where they're placed, they will give players a special ability that they can utilize during the game. If a player wants to, they could also place a citizen on the second space of one of the rows that matches that symbol. 
If a second citizen is placed on a row, the player will gain an immediate bonus. We'll discuss the scoring benefits of citizens during later action and scoring discussions, and we'll go over each citizen ability in detail after we've fully explained the other steps of the round and the cycle. Citizen tiles can be drawn from the board, and other players may pass their own citizen tiles for you to use on your turn. After using a citizen tile, whether it be yours or an opponent's, once again, it will be placed on one of the spaces that is eligible for that citizen on your player board. Any other tile of your player color, whether it's used or not used, will be placed face down onto the ship space of your colonia board. So for instance, since this tile does not show a citizen symbol and it's in the red player color, the red player would place it on this space of their colonia board, even if they used it to gain resources. Once again, citizen tiles can't be placed on this river space because they're permanently placed on the citizen spaces of the player board. Any non-citizen player tile of an opponent's player color will be placed to the right of your player board, whether it's used or unused. The corners of each player's board are construction crane spaces. If a player takes one of these tiles, then they will uncover a crane space of the specific color, either red, yellow, blue, or green. At the end of the scoring phase, when the player uncovers a crane tile, they will score a one-time bonus for each structure in their colonia that matches the crane's color. Players will score higher bonuses for these tiles early in the game. We'll look at this scoring in detail in a moment. On their turn, after a player has used one or both of their citizen tiles, they then have the opportunity to build one building tile. Building tiles can only be placed on vacated spaces of a player's colonia board. To place building tiles, players will return builders, workers, and possibly assistants to the supply. If a player returns two colors of a specific color back to the supply, they could build a double building tile that matches that color. So for instance, if this player returned these two blue workers, they would be able to build this double blue tile. If a player returns one builder and one worker of a specific color, they are allowed to build a double tile showing one gray side and one color. For instance, this player would be able to build this tile with a gray builder and a blue worker. It's also important to note that a player can return an assistant to the supply to change the color of a worker. For instance, if this player discarded this blue worker, this assistant, and this builder, they would be able to take a double building tile showing one gray side and one side of any color. For instance, they could select this gray and green tile. It's also important to note that a player can discard a single worker to build a single space tile. It's important to note that whether a player builds a single tile or a double tile on their turn, both will count for their one tile per turn limit. When tiles are built onto a player's colonia board, they must be placed in unoccupied spaces. So for instance, this tile was able to be placed right here because there are two open adjacent spaces. None of these other spaces in the player's colonia board are available to have buildings placed on them. They're still blocked by workers. And it's also important to remember that these spaces right here showing buildings pre-printed on the board cannot be built over as well. When tiles are placed in a player's colonia board, they will immediately generate a bonus for that player. Tiles showing a specific color will allow a player one type of bonus, and tiles showing a specific symbol like this will generate a different bonus for players. We'll go over the bonus generated by placing a tile of a specific color first. When a player places a building showing a specific color, they're able to send envoys to Rome. Let's look at how to do that now. When a player is sending an envoy to Rome, they first have to take available envoys from the river space of their player board. This player has two envoys available to be sent to Rome. When you place a building on your colonia board of a specific color, you are able to send either one or two envoys to Rome, depending on how big the building was. In our example, we placed a double blue building tile. This means that we could send up to two envoys to Rome. These tiles in the forum square are made up of mosaic spaces of different color areas. A color area is one specific color grouped together that is orthogonally adjacent. So for instance, this is one blue color area, but this is a separate blue color area because they're not connected orthogonally. If an envoy of any player color is in a color area and you've placed a building matching that color, you're required to place your envoys in the same color area. So for instance, since we completed a blue building 
and there's already an envoy of the yellow player's color in a blue color area, the red player would have to place any new envoys in this area. It's important to note that the envoys do not have to be placed adjacent to the existing envoys. So for instance, if we were only placing one envoy, we could place it in this space if we wanted to. If a player places envoys in a way that would complete a color area, they gain an immediate bonus. So for instance, since this area is now completely filled with envoys, the red player would gain an immediate bonus because they completed the color area. When a player completes a color area, they immediately gain one of the bonuses listed next to this symbol. They can either gain a tribune, an assistant, a gold coin, the ability to move their bar one space to the right, or two victory points. It's also important to note that the building tiles are limited. If a tile would completely run out, players can no longer build tiles of that color. If, however, there are still available tiles of the corresponding color in the separate stack, a player can use the other side of existing tiles to do the action they want to do. A player can also return a single gray worker to build any one of the single spaced special symbol buildings. If a player builds a building with a gray half, they will gain a specific bonus based on the symbol that is showing on the gray half of the building. If a player builds a building with the triumphal column symbol showing, they will immediately receive victory points indicated on top of the column fragment on the Trajan's column space of the game board. In addition to this, they'll receive one point for each active citizen in their colonia. So in our example, the red player would receive three points for this column fragment and an additional two points for their active citizens. It's important to note that citizens can become inactive if they're not paid at the end of every round, and we'll go over what that looks like in a moment. If a player builds a building with the library, market, or basilica symbol showing, they are able to move up on the corresponding track of the game board. So let's say, for instance, that the yellow player built a building showing the library. They would be able to move to the next space of the library track. When a player moves to the first space of a track, they're able to immediately gain that bonus. The yellow player would immediately gain a worker of any color and one tribune. If a player moves to the second space of a track, they're able to gain a bonus from the space they just moved to, or any previous space of the track. So for instance, at this space, the yellow player would either be able to gain one builder or one worker of any color and a tribune. If a player moves to the third space of this track, they would be able to place an available envoy directly onto an eagle space of the forum. So for instance, if the yellow player moved to this space of the library track, if they wanted to, they could place an envoy onto an eagle space. Normally, players aren't allowed to place envoys on these spaces, and these spaces will give players benefits during scoring. If a player moves onto the fourth space of the library track, they are able to immediately take a colonia tile from their street grid and use it. Once a player reaches the fourth space of a particular track, this track ends for that player. After receiving the benefit for the fourth space, the player would move that particular marker from the track to the space next to the Trajan's column. They will immediately score victory points equal to building a triumphal column. So for instance, they would gain three victory points with this column piece showing, plus one additional point for every active citizen. If a player moves to the first space of the Basilica track, they will gain two assistants. If they move to the second space, they would gain two tribunes. If they move to the third space, they would be able to shift their upgrade bar one space to the right. And if they reach the fourth space, they would be able to immediately carry out one additional building action provided they have the applicable builders or workers. After moving to this fourth space, they would then gain the benefit that we looked at previously. If a player reaches the first space of the market track, they would immediately gain one coin. If the player reaches the second space of the market track, they would get to choose an area bonus as if they had completed a color area. As a reminder, these are any of the bonuses listed here. If a player reaches the third space of the market track, they could immediately place an available envoy on any colored space in the forum. When doing this, they can ignore the color placement rule that we discussed earlier, but it's important to note that they can't place on eagles as part of this bonus. And if a player moves to the fourth space of the market track, they can immediately take a colonia tile from their street grid and use it. Once a starting player has finished their turn, play will continue clockwise. The starting player's neighbor on the left would reveal their two tiles, choose which of them they want to use, and carry out a building action. 
just like we've discussed over the past few minutes. After each player has had one full turn consisting of these steps, the round will end. The starting player figure is given to the next player on the right of the current starting player, and a new round is started by revealing two new street cards. A cycle will end when players have gone through one pile of street cards completely. At the end of each cycle there will be a scoring phase, but first a few things have to happen. The first thing players would need to do is to pay any citizens in their colonia if they want them to remain active. The cost to pay citizens is one gold for each row that contains at least one citizen. So for instance, to keep these citizens active, the red player would need to pay one gold to this row and one gold to this row. In our example, we'll say that the player wanted to pay one gold to keep this row of citizens active. If players are not able or willing to pay certain citizens, these tiles are flipped over with the envoy side facing up. When this happens, they become inactive. If a citizen is inactive, it's of no use to the player. These citizens will no longer score the player any bonus points, and their special abilities are not active. If a player already has an inactive citizen at the start of a cycle scoring phase, they can reactivate this citizen by paying one gold. After paying a citizen or deciding to not pay a citizen, the scoring phase will then proceed as follows. First, players will complete construction crane scoring. If there's a construction crane visible on one of the corners of a player's colonia board, players will score points for each matching structure in their colonia board. The number of points scored for each structure is equal to the points scored for the triumphal column scoring. Three points in cycle one, two points in cycle two, and one point in cycle three. So if we had this example where a player had a green construction crane uncovered and two matching green structures, they would score six points for this construction crane. If a player had a setup that looked like this, they would instead score three, six, nine points. It's also important to note that if a player has uncovered more than one color of construction crane in a cycle, they will score all of those construction cranes at the end of the cycle. After a construction crane has been scored, flip it over to its colorless side. It's important to note that players cannot build over construction cranes. Next, players will score their colonia. When scoring a colonia, a player will score each row of their colonia board. They will score different amounts of victory points based on how many active citizens are in this row. For every different building symbol in a colonia row up to a max of four, players will score victory points equal to the citizens that they have placed out. So let's say, for instance, that this player's colonia board looked like this. Since there are no gray buildings in this first row, it's not scored in this example. In the second row, however, the player has two different building symbols, and they have one active citizen in this row. Because this active citizen lines up in the first row, the player will score two victory points for each different building type they have in this row. So in this example, they would score four points for these two different building types. In the third row, the player also has two different building types, but they don't have any active citizens. So in this third row, they would score two victory points for their two different buildings. The final sixth row would score the player three points for every different building type, but they haven't been able to build any there, so they wouldn't score any for that row in this example either. And it's important to remember, if a citizen is inactive, they don't count for scoring. So in this example, if this citizen were inactive in this row, the player would score one victory point instead of two for the active citizens. The next step in cycle scoring would be forum scoring. During forum scoring, a player will score one point for each envoy that is orthogonally adjacent to an eagle space. So for instance, in this example, the red player and the yellow player would each receive one victory point for these two envoys. For any envoy that is on an eagle space, a player would receive two victory points. Players would then score points for their largest group of connected envoys. So let's say, for instance, that the red player had these four connected envoys. Envoys must be connected orthogonally. So for instance, if the red player had this setup, they would only have three connected envoys. The fourth is diagonal, so it wouldn't be connected. For their largest connected group of envoys, players would score points based on the slide bar of their prestige track. So for instance, with the red player having four connected envoys, they would look at the number on the slide bar that relates to their number of connected envoys. In this instance, it would be the number that says four to five. 
They would then score points equal to the number below that space on the slide bar. So in our example, the red player would score four points for that connected group. After forum scoring is completed, players will complete Trajan scoring. Now in the introductory game, after the first and second cycle, players wouldn't complete Trajan scoring. But after playing the game a few times, there would be a Trajan card after each cycle that players would score. The number of points scored by a player for fulfilling one of the two tasks that the Trajan card specifies are indicated by the position of the player's Trajan head on their board. If the Trajan head is within these two guidelines, the player would score three points. If the Trajan head is within these guidelines, the player would score five points. And if the Trajan head is in between these two guidelines, they would score seven points. Each Trajan card always has an upper task to complete and a bottom task to complete. The upper task is always a building task. So it's important to pay attention to the specifications as to what patterns will score bonus points when taking Colonia tiles from the streets. The bottom task is usually a collecting task. These tasks will require players to have certain types of resources, or a combination of resources and citizens, triumphal columns, or construction cranes. It's important to note that for these collection tasks, players aren't required to give up the resources, they simply have to have them. If a player completes one of the two tasks, they'll receive the number of victory points currently shown above the Trajan head. In our example, this would be five points. If they fulfill both bottom and top tasks, they'll receive double the points. And if they fulfill a task multiple times, they'll receive points for them multiple times. So for instance, this Trajan scoring card indicates that players need to build three structures in different colors directly below one another, and it states that players need to have one triumphal column building in their colonia, plus a tribune and a builder. So for instance, if the player's board looked like this, they would have completed one of the requirements for the building cards. And since they have a tribune, a builder, and a triumphal column building in their colonia, they also complete the bottom requirements. Many of the Trajan cards follow these types of patterns. We won't go over each one in detail, but there's a very helpful appendix in the rulebook. After players have completed all of the steps of cycle scoring, they will begin a new cycle. To begin a new cycle, place the next column fragment on the Trajan's column on the board. Pass the starting player figure to the player on the right of the current starting player, and then reveal the next two street cards from the available pile. Players will continue to play this way until after the scoring phase of the third cycle. The player who has the most victory points will win, and in the case of a tie, the player who has the most active citizens in their colonia wins. If there's still a tie, the player who has the most resources left wins, and if there's still a tie after that, the players will share the victory. Now that we've looked at all of the different aspects of gameplay, I want to briefly highlight the special abilities granted to players by each of the different citizens. If players place a citizen in the first space of this row, they can ignore the color placement restrictions when placing an envoy in the forum. They can start a new color area of their choice in the color they have just built. In addition, during the forum scoring, these players will gain not only one victory point for orthogonally adjacent envoys, but also one victory point for each of the envoys that is diagonally next to an eagle as well. If a player places a citizen in the first space of this row, they get to take two different area bonuses when they've completed a color area instead of one. If a player places a citizen in the first space of this row, the moment they do this, they would be able to flip their slide bar to its opposite side. This side of the slide bar is more beneficial to players. In addition to this, every time a player receives a slide bar upgrade, they're allowed to move to the next cypress space instead of the next open space. So for instance, receiving an upgrade, this player could move to this space. If a player places a citizen in the first space of this row, once per turn during their building phase, this player would be able to exchange one coin, tribune, or assistant for another. If a player places a citizen in the first space of this row, twice on their turn, they could exchange one assistant for one worker of any color. And if a player places a citizen in the first space of this row, once per turn, they could exchange one assistant for one builder. In addition to scoring better bonuses for their Colonia boards by placing citizens in the second space of each row, the player would receive a one-time bonus each time they place a citizen in the second space of each row. For placing a citizen onto this space, the player would be able to place an envoy from their ship onto the forum if they have one available at that moment. If a player places a citizen onto this space, they would be able to take one area bonus. 
If a player places a citizen onto this space, they could take one tribune or one coin. If a player places a citizen onto this space, they would be able to take one coin or one assistant. If a player places a citizen onto this space, they would be able to take one worker of any color. And if they place a citizen on this space, they would be allowed to take one builder. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. That was our video. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. If you still have any questions at all about how to play the game, please comment below or email us directly at thedicereview at gmail.com. If you want to hear more from the Dicey Review, you can check out the Dicey Review podcast. It can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Tuned In, SoundCloud, most podcasting apps. You can read our written reviews at thedicereview.com and make sure and connect with us on social media or at our Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, we'll see you at the table.